welcome to Art by Clark. I'm Mrs. Clark, and today we're going to be creating saber-toothed tigers. We're going back to the prehistoric era of the dinosaurs. And the amazing thing about this project is it's actually going to be in two parts. So this one isn't actually going to be due at the end of this video. We're actually going to have another video where we're going to put all the pieces together to create the saber tooth tiger. So what we need for this lesson is paper and lots of it, pencil, scissors, glue, crayons, and markers. And just a little history of the saber tooth tiger, which even surprised me. The scientific name Smilodon means saber tooth. And did you know that the saber tooth tiger is more closely related to a lion than a tiger? I did not know that, and I was very surprised. And they are best known for their large canine teeth, and as you can see here, those large teeth, which were almost a foot long. A foot, that's a, that's a lot. And they were smaller than the present day lions, but they were five feet long and 440 pounds. So they were heavy little guys, huh? So anyway, I want you to gather all your supplies and let's, I will be waiting for you and we can get started. First of all, as you can see, our saber tooth tiger is actually 3D, so it is a form. We didn't talk about our elements, but the elements we will be doing is line, shape, you'll see some shapes, color, lots of color, texture, form, being because he pops out, and symmetry, because we're gonna fold this and what is on one side will be on the other side. So we will go over the symmetry. This is a two-parter, so this will be part one. We are going to make all the ingredients and then we're gonna put it all together and create him in the next video. So, shockingly enough, we need three pieces of paper. And if you have black paper for the background, you are welcome to use black. I do not have black, so I'm gonna use white. But as you see from my background here, I drew all my shapes with black, but you could draw it with white if you had a black paper. So you see you can use a color in the background but I'm going to use white. We're gonna put the saber tooth tiger to the side. We'll put them like right there. And you'll see that I have three pages. First, we're going to color two of them the color of the tiger. I chose yellow, maybe oh, some kind of warm color, yellow, brown, um, some earth type color. So I take my yellow, I kind of went on the angle and I'm just coloring two pages. Why two? Because we need one that's going to be for the head and the paw, and one that's going to be for the body, and I'm pretty sure for the mouth. And we will go over all that. So as you see, I went with yellow. I like yellow, it's a light color. Have to be careful though, if your crayon's dirty, you can get some. And I'm just going in one direction to get some texture. I just want them to be kind of furry. But I'm gonna try to cover up all my white if I can. Sometimes using a newspaper underneath would help. And if you see, I like to frame my crayon in so I don't fully have to color outside the page. And then we're going to speed this up a little because you're getting the idea and I'll color the second one too. So now that I finished this one, let's color yet another one because I need more fur for my saber tooth tiger. We'll be right back. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so now we're back. And again, like I said, you could have done your saber tooth tiger in like an orange color. You could have did it in a brownish color, even maybe in like an orangey red. But I decided to go with yellow. And I did it for the fur. I tried to make it as furry as I possibly could without having too many lines. You know, I'm still touching it up as I go along. These two will now go to the side. And we're going to do the background. Now in the background, we have a whole bunch of fossils we can look at here. And you'll see this sheet right next to me, just right there or there. And if you see here, we have a bunch of prehistoric fossils that we can put on the background. So taking my black crayon, if you want to use marker, you can as well. It's whatever you have. Or even pencil and then trace over. All depends how confident you are. I'm going to draw a couple of these. Like here I'll do the fish. Do the couple of the ribs. And get a little smaller, smaller, smaller. And then we could do the tail. And then we have to do a line to attach all these for the backbone to the head and then come back. That's why I said sometimes a pencil is good for that. Maybe we want to add a leaf. A lot of these would be your cave painting type look, but it's also fossilized. If you see here, we could put a paw over here. The paw kind of looks like that. And then we have one two, three, I wonder what made this, but it definitely has pointed. Could be a dinosaur, could be some kind of cat. Oh, who knows, pretty eerie to even think about it. We can do a dragonfly. I think it would be a dragonfly. They do say dragonflies have been around a really long time. They are a very cool insect, by the way, because they eat mosquitoes, don't like mosquitoes. All right, I'm going to do a bone right here. And you're kind of getting what I'm getting at. So we'll probably speed it up so I can fill this paper up for you. And then we'll get going with starting to draw our cat. Okay, so now we're back. As you see, I filled my whole area. I'm going to leave it the black and white. I use my sheet here for some help, but you can always come up with your own fossils if you like. And now we have the background set. So now we're going to go back to our cat and we're going to put our background aside, if I can lift this up, of course. And here we go. And again, remember our kitty cat here. And let's see, what do we do first? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over. What? I know. Flip it over. And we're, we're going to fold it so that we see the white side so it's easier to draw. And we're going to fold it as neat as we can. And the hands will stay here and press down. And we are going to use this fold. This is the fold right here just to kind of tell you because we need that fold it's very important now to do the face and if you can kind of see the face of the saber tooth tiger it curves then it comes and zigzags about three times getting smaller and then it comes in so knowing that we're going to start on the fold curve in come out zigzag three times but we also have to glue this down so we're going to come down and then do a 
kind of a half rectangle. Need that to fold later, you will see. And then we're going to curve it in. Now you may make this bigger if you want, smaller. I chose to do this size. It's fine, whichever you want to do. This is actually your ear. And then this is going to be where the glue is going to go. Now with the extra space we have, we're going to do the jaw. Just going to come do a sideways U. And now we finish that one. With the second piece of paper, we're not going to be folding it, but we are going to reserve about a third of it. So what, and if you notice, backwards again, I'm going to fold it maybe about a third of the way down. You're probably like, why? Well, you, sh you will see. This is going to be the paw. And this is going to be the body. And I might actually make it a little bigger. I think I want a little bigger spot for the paw. There we go. Okay. The body is very simply, and we're going to go up to the, to the line, is just going to go from the corner and come up as a curve. We're going to do it on this side as well. We're going to come up and make a curve. Very simple. Now with this, this is our paw. So we're going to bring a line out. And we're going to make four bumps. One, two, three, four, and then go back. If you know the yellow is on the other side, we're drawing on the white side. And as you saw, there can be a thumb on the paw if you want. You would just add another U right here if you want to add a little thumb in here. And then, of course, we will have some nails to make later. And we will have to cut those separate because those will be white. So now we need to get those scissors, all those scissors. And remember, thumb to the side fingers to the ground and never cut upside down because you might hurt yourself. Okay, so we are going to cut all the pieces out and you're going to follow your line and take your time. Remember it is yellow on the other side, that nice hard work you did or whatever color you did. And we're going to cut. This is actually the line of symmetry. We're going to talk a little symmetry after this, just to kind of show you what symmetry is and how it's going to help us do our tiger. Saber to tiger, that is. And please make sure you feed your tigers, because hopefully they won't bite. So anyway, as you see, I'm cutting. And if you did this correctly, you should be able to open your tiger up and there's his head. Mine's a little smaller than my other one, but that's fine. It will be just as cute. Now I'm going to cut the jaw. You only really need one, but it's fine because it would be nice to have two in case I mess one up. And this is not on the fold, so this should come apart right very easily. So put those aside. And I'll put this aside in case I need any yellow later. Now we're going to cut out the body. I might make them a little thinner since my head's smaller. Snip at the folds and come back a little this way. I'm going to make them a little skinnier. And here's the body, here's the head, and then here will be the jaw. Now we need our paw, because the saber-toothed tiger is waving. And you go around. If you don't want all the excess, you can always cut it off. I sometimes find it's easier that way. But since I'm in the middle of cutting, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to cut this finger a little skinnier here. Let's 
Let's cut a little bit of this off. Snip. Okay. So much better. Okay. And now we have the paw. And then I should have a thumb somewhere. There it is. So easy to lose our pieces. There we go. So as you see, we have our head. And I'm actually going to round out his head a little bit. I think he's a little too pointed for me. So there we go much better and we have the paw which will go over here our thumb which will probably be right here and this will be the jaw that will go underneath and here's an extra one so you might think that now we're done but no we are not now we need to draw in the face and for that you cannot use markers we have to use crayons or oil pastels because we need to do a rubbing. And that way, whatever we rub on one side will be the same on the other. What I mentioned about this line is it's going to be our line of symmetry. When we fold it and we rub it together and open it back up, whatever we do to one side should be the same as the other. Ooh, interesting, huh? So let's see how well we do. So first, we're going to get our pastel. I have a crayon. I'm going to put this aside and this aside. And we're just going to focus on the head. Now, over here, we're going to work on this side of the line. And I'm going to do a curve. And then I'm going to do like a U. Try to make him a little angry and do a dot. Because he is a saber tooth tiger. I don't think he's that friendly. Also on this side, we're going to do the nose. The nose will be a line, kind of like a capital I. But it'll be a line. It's going to come back in. And we're going to stay on this side. And then go over this way. Let's not forget the ear. We're going to mimic our, we're going to do that, that, and that. And now we're going to close it up and rub. I'm using a nail. You can also use a pencil. You can use all sorts of different things to rub it in. I luckily enough have some nails. And let's open this up and look at that. It has appeared on the other side. So yes, it's not going to be as dark. Don't panic. We're going to trace over it now with our crayon or pastel. And you'll see. Get that ear fur in. Let's see. Get that nose. I want it to be the same. Oh, it didn't rub very well here, so we'll just rub that a little bit more. There we go. And then I can follow the line over. So there's our tiger. So now we need to color in the details. I do have some pinks in the Crayola, so I'll probably use my Crayolas today. I kind of want to do a pink nose for my cat. If it doesn't work as dark, I do have a different kind of um, pink. I'll try. Let's see. Didn't expect that to be a, not as bright, so let's try this one. Oh, much better. This is just a different brand of crayon, but it is working wonders. So we're going to finish it up right there. My eyes, I'm going to do a green tiger. Green, nice dark green. Get that green eyes in. And this is perfectly symmetrical because it is the same on both sides of that line. 
kind of gave you a little math lesson. Who knew that art works very close with math and science? Can I say rainbow? Hmm, that's pretty scientific. Okay. I'm going to add a little pink into the ears. It's kind of cute to have some pink in those ears. And then now we're going to get the brown and we're going to put the spots on our cat. So I'm going to do a line here. If you wanted to stay symmetry, you could just do it on one side and rub. I'm probably now just going to put my patterns on. That looks like a letter I. Now let's put a couple little stripes on the nose. There we go. Put a, put a line, I guess like here. I'll do the same line here. Like I said, if you want to do the symmetry, you can. I'm just adding some details, trying to match it best I can. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to take the body, and you kind of see what I'm doing here. So we'll probably speed this up just so you get an idea. I'm just going to put spots on our saber tooth tiger. This thumb will be glued on right there. So you see, that's how it'll work. So now we have our cat. Next time we get together, we're going to take all our pieces and magically transform our cat into this. Cannot wait till next week. So until next week, Make sure you have all your pieces ready, because we have some building to do. I'll see you next time. Bye.